In general, Tesla is poised for a very, very good week with UBS raising their price target, even while maintaining a neutral uh, position. There's also a lot of other good news in the air right now. In fact, uh, President Erdogan just asked Tesla if they wouldn't mind building a factory in Turkey. I'm sure that's probably going to happen. Anyway, the market, on the other hand, might be feeling a little skittish this week. Not so much about the Fed's decision. Pretty much it's going to be a pause. But what they're going to be concerned about is going to be what happens when the, the uh, chairman speaks on Wednesday afternoon, Chairman Powell, what does he say? And uh, if it's hawkish at all, that will not be good. We'll talk more about that later. This is Randy Kirk. Hit like, subscribe, and notify. Uh, I've got Brian White coming on tomorrow, so you know you want to see that. And he's just been to Detroit, to the Detroit Auto Show. He's got, he says he's got breaking news, stuff that you have not heard yet. All right. Uh, and of course, sometime in today's program, we will talk, of course, about these. We have a new record holder. I'll talk about the record holder later. All right. The UA strike goes into a new week with absolutely no indication of any quick resolution. The UAW may have created an overly aggressive offer, which can be too hard to back away from. Best we know right now is that UAW is at 35%. And that the highest bid so far is from Stellantis at 21%, with 10% of that being immediate. UAW President Fain may not be able to accept that number for reasons of personal pride and or for political reasons, because he's promised so much. And he's the brand new president, only two months in the job. I think this is potentially a very bad situation where the uh, auto companies will not be able to come close to the numbers Fain is talking about, and Fain will find it very hard to back down. This is a this is not a good place to be in a negotiating situation. Now, the White House is sending in a team to help. Um, I haven't seen any evidence that the White House is very good at mediation or negotiation, <laughs> uh, but maybe I'm forgetting something. Uh, does anybody have an example other than in Congress where the current administration has shown evidence that they are really good at negotiating or mediating. I can't think of it. Okay, maybe maybe I'm just forgetting. All right. Um, after reading a couple of more articles, I've realized that Fain wanted this strike. No question in my mind about that now. He wanted the strike. He did nothing to avoid it and everything to create it. That's just one more negative sign. I think this one, some people are saying that it won't even get close until uh, until Halloween. So I'm uh, not Halloween. I'm sorry. Till Thanksgiving, that that this will be that the the striking workers won't even be terribly worried about it. They're prepared for it. Uh, they know that they're going to have to do this, and that uh, they can make it to Halloween uh, to Thanksgiving rather without even thinking about it. Okay, we'll see what happens on that. So oil is continuing up in the pre market. This is not good. It's now at ninety one dollars for Texas Intermediate, ninety four plus for. Uh, the uh, I'm always forgetting the name of the other one. I, what's wrong with me? Anyway, sadly, I think we're going to see 100 on Texas Intermediate. Um, and uh, I think that the president's attention today, this week, is in the wrong place. He should be sending in his team of experts to figure out what to do about oil. The strike will do fine. It's not. He's not going to change anything. It's not going to happen faster because of what he's doing. All right, let's take a look at what are the reports. I got a bunch of Tesla news after this. Please don't go away. I got big, really good stuff coming up. So number one, we got on Monday, we have home builders confidence. Won't be able to report on that until Tuesday. But on Tuesday, we'll also have housing starts and building permits. So we'll get all three of those together and get some idea of where the housing start, where, where we're going with housing. We need a bunch of housing to be built, but the home builders, while they've stepped it up a little bit, um, we need a lot more than what they've stepped up so far. And I'd, I'll be shocked if we see much evidence that they're going to build up more. In fact, the street is expecting housing starts to be down, building permits to be up slightly. In both cases, it's slightly and confidence to be down. So that doesn't give me much hope that we're going to get the relief we need uh, in this shortage of available properties for sale. Um, on Wednesday, we have the Fed interest rate decision. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that'll be at two o'clock Eastern time. Uh, and then the Fed uh, chair Powell speaks at 2.30 Eastern time. Both of these things, of course, taking place while the market is still open. Uh, and I will hopefully report on these. Well, I will definitely report on these right after 
uh, Chairman Powell speaks, that will either be with or without some help from some other experts who I'll try to line up between now and then. All right, on Thursday, uh, we have initial jobless claims at 8.30. That is expected to stay about where it's been. Um, I have no reason to believe otherwise. I think the, jobless, the, the, the job situation is very, very stable right now. People say it's getting a little softer. Okay, but it's got to get a lot softer before it's a problem. Um, I, but I also don't see that there's a, a big increase in demand coming along right now either. So um, that is all that's possibly true with regard to all of those issues. Um, uh, we've got the uh, Philadelphia Fed manufacturing survey coming at uh, th that morning as well. That is expected to be well down even after New York was up. We've got the U.S. current account deficit showing a pretty dramatic uh, reduction. That's probably a year-over-year -year issue with regard to something that happened last year. We've got U.S. leading economic indicators coming at 10 o'clock. So I won't be able to report on that till Friday. Uh, but those are expected to come in down again after being down. Uh, this I think this will make eight months in a row if they're right. If the street is right, this will make eight months in a row. And it could be right. I'm, I have no idea. Okay, existing home sales, um, those are expected to pop up a tiny, tiny bit. Uh, that'll go, uh, that, you know, there's just not very many homes to sell, as we've talked about over and over again. On Friday, we have uh, Lisa Cook, uh, the Fed governor, Lisa Cook, speaking on, uh, on uh, Friday morning. And then the rest of these reports will not be able to report it on until Friday night uh, when I do my week in review. Uh, we call it good news Friday. Um, and uh, But we will have the S&P Flash U.S. Services, the PMI. We'll have the U.S. Manufacturing PMI. Both of those, the uh, services is supposed to be up a little bit according to the street, as is manufacturing PMI is supposed to be up a little bit. So these are purchasing managers' expectations of what's going to happen in the future. Both of these are showing a slight increase. That's good for the economy. Uh, and it'll be too late to affect the Fed decision now. <laughs> and then a couple of more Fed presidents speak uh, after that uh, on Friday afternoon. All right. Sawyer Merritt is reporting. He says Tesla spent $1.7 billion on R&D in the first half of 2023. Apple, in the same time period, spent $15 billion. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then Sawyer, holy mackerel. Uh, I think uh, Apple needs Tesla's R&D team. Okay. But there's way more to this story. Sawyer also put up a list um, from stats uh, dash feed that shows Apple is considered to be the most innovative company with Tesla number two. To this, Elon posted a response. Who puts out this list? Well, it would appear that that list comes from web-assets.bcg.com slash 45 slash 1A. Oh, and then a whole bunch more stuff, but maybe you can get there from there. I'll put it down in the information so that you can look this up if you want to. They put this list out annually. SpaceX has been number 13 for two years in a row. Can you imagine that? Tesla is up from number three to number two this year. Now, maybe there's another explanation. This could be one more explanation for why Tesla stock is worth so much more than any other car company, because the only other car company to make the top 50 is Mercedes at number 43. Not one other car company gets into the top 50 most innovative companies in the world. My, my. Well, anyway, um, not only does Tesla extract a lot more innovation per dollar spent, but they're just more innovative in general. This is a Sawyer speaking. Also, SpaceX should be number one, Tesla number two. I don't agree with that. I think the, the, the order is correct, even if Tesla should be number one and SpaceX number two. All right, from investing.com, UBS Global has reiterated a neutral rating on Tesla and raised their 12-month price target from 270 to 290. The adjustment comes in light of Tesla's ongoing strategy of leveraging its cost advantage and stimulating demand through price reductions. UBS analysts believe that this pricing strategy could potentially provide Tesla with a formidable competitive edge, allowing the company to expand its customer base. This approach may also create challenges for its competitors who are grappling with higher operating costs, like, I don't know, the United Auto Workers. However, with this strategy, there's the 
it has the potential to be a game changer. It could cap the stock's upside, keeping it within the boundaries of consensus estimates over the next year. You'll notice they're forgetting something entirely. By the time I finish this, I'll tell you. UBS's projection suggests that Tesla's unit sales are poised to grow by approximately 22% in 2024. Not a chance. <laughs> Reaching about 2.3 million units. It'll be way more than that. With an even more accelerated growth of approximately 41% in 2025. Now that's interesting that they're saying that. How do they get the 22% growth in 2024 when we have the Cybertruck coming out? I don't know. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> So this is uh, culminating in roughly 3.25 units sold in 2025. That's way closer to reality. These figures, while impressive, fall slightly short of Tesla management target of achieving a 50% growth year over year. That is a, an average growth rate year over year, starting at 500,000 in 2020. We don't know how many times this has to be reiterated. And so the number for 2025, I believe, would be in line on that 3.25 million. I'd have to go look it up. Um, UBS's 2024 EPS forecast lags behind consensus, consensus estimates by about 12%, but then they're slightly higher than them at about 4%, about 4% better for 2025. While Tesla remains, by the way, did you see my 2024 this morning? I bet you my 2024 higher than their 2024, and I'll be doing a 2025 later this week, and I'll bet you my number for 2025 is way higher than theirs. While Tesla remains well positioned for the future, the analysts suggest potential investors may want to wait for a more favorable entry point. I don't think they're ever, I mean, sure, they can get it 10 points lower. I don't think they're going to be seeing very many favorable entry points. Throughout the year, Tesla has implemented multiple price reductions across various regions and products in order to stimulate sales vol volume. Encouragingly, reports from specific regions and UBS's Tesla price monitor indicate that the price reductions have stabilized as of August 2023. UBS analysts believe that in the midterm, Tesla will continue to experiment with price elasticity, relying on its cost advantage and financial resources to fine tune pricing and balance it with supply and demand dynamics. This strategy, though affecting the short term, may establish a robust foundation for Tesla's long term success by allowing them to scale up, build a substantial customer base, and exert pressure on competitors with higher battery electric vehicle cost structures. Well, yeah, we'll talk more about this in a second. Um, Elon is meeting with Netanyahu uh, on uh, Monday, and he's uh, meeting with, uh, has already met with Erdogan today. Uh, I wonder what the Guinness Book of World Records number is for meeting with heads of state in a single year. Uh, there may be a political number, maybe for a president. What about for a non-political uh, person? He has to be well into double digits at this point. I think he was at nine. These these would be two more. Uh, maybe he's uh, up in 12, 13. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, in case you haven't seen this yet in the mainstream headlines, Tesla just built their 5 million vehicle. And around July of next year, we should see number 7 million. Each one of these is a potential software, insurance, and energy purchaser. Not to mention a future buyer of more Tesla cars home energy storage systems, solar roofs, and more. In addition, they are salespeople, ambassadors for more Tesla product sales. They're potential buyers of the stock, and they add to the data collection that we are you know, so, in, so uh, interested in, in terms of getting full self-driving. And later on, they could be a massive purchase, massive purchasers, of course, of FSD and putting their cars out as robo-taxis. Texas, Texas, <laughs> Tesla's sales, potential buyers of the stock. I'm sorry. Maybe that's what Elon is thinking about when he says he'll make a bit less margin to sell a few more cars, as UBS was just saying. I mentioned this morning about all the headlines that Tesla is getting about the giga casting that might one day make the entire underbody of the Gen 3 car. I am trying to figure out what Apple has done lately that comes close to being as significant in product development that would keep Apple number one in the innovation category. Anyway, markets are barely up across the board as I am right at the last time I looked at what, at least, it is Jerome Powell's week. It is definitely Powell's week again when it comes to the direction of the market. It is a long time until November when the board meets again. So this decision carries a lot of weight on the, uh, the it, in terms of data, 
which they are either looking at it or not, I'm not sure, Trueflation has taken another large dip down in just the last few days, going from uh, down from 2.7 down to 2.5. It's a very sizable and noticeable dip. And this is despite gasoline prices going up. And you may have missed my this morning's analysis of Tesla's 2024 profit. I did 2023 the day before. I will put up the 2024 uh, video up here uh, as a card. Um, and I show you in that 2024 profit, somebody said they didn't see where I said it, but I will, I will tell you that it shows how even in the base case, the 400 price uh, uh, estimate that I have for the end of January is completely uh, dialed in at that point without FSD, without RoboTaxis, without Optimus, without Dojo. All right. Uh, let's see. Tomorrow, I've lined, as I mentioned, I've lined up Brian White. He's just coming back from the Detroit Auto Show and says he has news to tell me about from there. I am hoping to maybe to get Jeff Lutz to join me on Wednesday. Maybe uh, maybe Larry will be joining me on Wednesday or Thursday to talk about the Powell speech and what the, all of those things might have meant. So as I mentioned, we've had now our largest order ever at 15. And this particular listener, watcher, viewer of the channel said he's a, he is the Tesla guy where he works. And so he's going to hand these out to members of his staff or our co-workers where he works. I won't mention where he works. Um, and he's, he, can't, he couldn't be more excited uh, to be giving these away. Maybe this is something you might want to think about doing. Uh, let's keep in mind the important things. If you haven't seen these uh, descriptions before, this is a three millimeter thick stainless steel cyber truck that is a bottle opener. Um, it is, you can't even bend the thing, okay? It's just, it's, uh, it is nine ounces, so it's very heavy. People are mentioning that when they're sending me emails, thanking me for sending it out. Um, this is a very cool product. It comes in a very nice box. Uh, one of these like Apple, speaking of Apple, they're innovative on their packaging. You know, my only patent, I have lots and lots of inventions and lots and lots of new product things that I've developed over the years. I only have one patent and it was far a box. <laughs> okay, anyway, here's the Cybertruck version with the camo on it, but you can see what a nice gift presentation that makes. So if you have people that you think this would make a great gift for, this is a $25 item. You can give it to buyers. Usually their, their maximum is $25. Uh, you can give it to customers. You can give it to fellow employees. You can give it to your friends and neighbors and your family members. Anybody who has even the slightest interest in Tesla, I think we'll find this quite fun. So you, uh, just uh, PayPal me at paypal.me forward slash Randy Kirk, all in lowercase letters. Um, or if you want to join Patreon at the $10, I had a lot of people join Patreon this week. If you'd like to join Patreon at the $10 level, then you get one for free. Be sure to say, I would like camouflage or I would like stainless steel. That'll save us some time and back and forth on the emailing in order to determine which, which it is that you wanted. Okay, there's where we are going into Monday. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow morning at 710, where I will give you any overnight news on Tesla, as well as we'll talk about what the market is looking like in the beginning of the day and where I think it might be headed later in the day. Hey, that's all I got right now. It has been great talking to you.